हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द बूस्टर पैक सो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इन केमिस्ट्री व्हाट आर वी गोइंग टू डिस्कस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक व्हिच इज क्वांटम नंबर्स इफ यू आर नॉट क्लियर विद द कांसेप्ट ऑफ क्वांटम नंबर्स यू कैन नॉट राइट द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिगरेशन ऑफ द डिफरेंट एलिमेंट्स एंड इफ यू कैन नॉट राइट द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिगरेशन आई एम सॉरी टू से केमिस्ट्री इज नॉट योर पार्ट ऑफ केक राइट यस सो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू sell the topic which is the base for inorganic chemistry which is your quantum numbers once you are familiar with quantum numbers you can write electronic configuration of all the elements known isn't it isn't it amazing yes so my dear students let's start this amazing session so what are quantum numbers i told you with the help of quantum numbers you can actually write the electronic configurations how can you write the electronic configurations actually the elect quantum numbers tells you the complete address of a particular electron so uh, let's relate it to us to day to day life uh, whenever you want to meet a friend of yours what do you do you obviously need to know his or her address right yes once you know the address you go to their house and you can meet that particular person right yes so in an address what all things are present ma'am we talk about uh, where is its house where is his house related yes you talk about that what else do you want you want the locality you want the locality or we could say you want the sector in which he or she is staying yes also you need to know their city yes if you don't know the city how can you reach there so address comprises of the city obviously the country now he or she is your friend and you are in india so we are taking this that your friend is also in india right yeah so you need the city you need the city what do you need next you need the sector you need the sector my dear students and you need the house number yes and also you need your friend's name so that you can meet uh, right yes so today we are going to meet each and every electron similarly the way you go are going to meet your friend right so let's start this session so first of all ma'am is asking you to locate everything huh? okay so the first and the most important thing i have a map here yes so we are not going to study chemistry directly first we'll study geography and then we'll study chemistry okay so my dear students let's take one city randomly one city and ma'am is saying let's take chandigarh right yes chandigarh is a beautiful city so i want all of you to uh, look locate where is chandigarh ma'am chandigarh is somewhere here right yes so the first and the most important thing which you located here is your city okay yes so just keep in your mind that you located a city and that is uh, chandigarh now i know the city i reached the city which is chandigarh now i want to go to my friend but i know that in chandigarh there are so many sectors right yes like in other cities they call there are so many um, societies right similarly in chandigarh we uh, say that there are so um, a lot of sectors okay so now your friend might be staying in any one particular sector any one particular society yes so now you have to look at a particular sector okay so in a city i can say that in a city i have various sectors right so from here from city i am going to a sector i hope this is clear yes so from here we look at any sector take any sector let us say i am taking the sector 22 okay 22 sector i am taking so my friend is here okay in this particular sector so now i'll go to sector 22 i have reached sector 22 can i meet my friend now no still what will the what will be there there will be a lot of houses right yes perfect so let's say we went to a city and then we went to a sector and now this sector will also have a lot of houses right yes so i want one particular house number which will be of my particular friend right so let us say now we will need a house number okay so you will choose one house number whichever house is your friends right yes so let's say you've reached of your friends house here perfect yes now after this after this my dear students in a house let us say now we have to take a condition that in one particular house only two people are present okay this is the condition which you have to take so only 
two people are present okay and you have to meet your friend let us say he or she he is a he so he is your friend right yes let's say his name is what should i call what should i call let's say his name is akash okay yes so you need to meet akash and akash is here so you'll choose one of the person this means that after this means that after city you went to a sector and then you went to a house number and then you went to a person right yes so what ma'am wants to tell you is to meet your friend you needed four particular things you needed a city you needed a sector you needed a house number and you needed your friend's name right yes similarly for an electron you need all those four things only these four things and you'll locate each and every electron isn't it amazing now let's start if you've got this concept you will get the electron concept as well so my dear students from here ma'am wants to introduce the modern quantum theory what is the modern quantum theory my my students a region a region of space where the probability of finding electron is maximum and that is known as an orbital okay so ma'am we didn't get any of it what is orbital this is so scientific uh, explanation so whenever you talk about a electron ma'am told you the house of electron the house of electron is actually known as the house of electron is actually known as orbital so this means city then sector and the house that house is known as the orbital okay i hope this is the layman definition which you understood now what happens is in multi electrons atoms or ions the address of a specific electron is given by some uh, numbers known as the quantum numbers and those are four quantum numbers ma'am is going to tell you right yes orbital is the home of electron ma'am told you that as well now my dear students i want to give you the explanation of this particular definition you know you know that let's say this is your nucleus let's say this is your nucleus right yes and around the nucleus you know electron is present now it's not that uh, a particular uh, position is fixed that electron will be present here yes it's this house let us say this is the house of electron okay so now the electron can be in any room of the house he can be in any room of the house right yes so here are the various probabilities here are the various probabilities of finding that electron and this complete probability is known as the orbital means in the house also there are few positions which have the maximum probability of finding the electron nearly 90 to 95% and that is known as an orbital so we've got the uh, scientific language uh, scientific explanation as well right now let's move forward my dear students the first the four quantum numbers which actually define the house or the address of an electron are these four quantum numbers first is your principal quantum number and it is denoted by n it is denoted by n also you can say you can relate it to the city okay yes so this means that the main shell the main your principal quantum number n will be your city now you know that in a city there can be a lot of sectors you know that right yes so the second quantum number is your azimuthal or the subsidiary quantum number and it is denoted by small l okay and what will it be this will denote the sector this will denote the sector now i know that in a city in a city there can be a lot of sectors similarly in a principal quantum number there can be more than one azimuthal quantum numbers this means that n can have l values like this right yes it can have more than one l values more than one sectors similarly the third quantum number which is your magnetic quantum number it is denoted by ml right yes and my dear students we know that in a sector so what is what will it denote it will denote house number and i know that in one particular sector there can be a lot of house numbers similarly i can say that there can be ml this can also have ml this will also have ml this will also have ml so ma'am in a city there can be more than one sectors in a sector there can be more than one house numbers right yes the last is your spin quantum number which is your which is denoted by small s or it is also denoted by you can denote it like s or it is also denoted like 
this okay and what does it represent here the person right yes now here one condition is fixed my dear students that there are only two persons in one particular house this means that this house number can have only two people only two people right yes this is the condition which you have to take so this uh, this can have two values this can have two values this can have two values and this can have two values only right yes if you got this idea Congratulations, you have got the major part of quantum numbers. Now, you only have to understand a few bits more, right? Yes. So, let's move forward. What will happen? Let's talk about the principal quantum number n, which will denote the city, okay? So, ma'am is again and again denoting city so that you can relate it to the day-to-day -day life, okay? So, my dear students, what does principal quantum number tell you? You know that you have an electron. You used to say that this is ma'am K shell. This is ma'am K L shell. Then L, then M, right? Yes, these were the names which you in your uh, uh, smaller classes, 9th, 10th, you have studied this. You used to call them K element shells, right? For K, you used to say N is equal to 1. For this, N is equal to 2. This is equal to N is equal to 3 and so on, right? Yes. So, these which you studied actually were your principal quantum numbers, right? Yes. So, it provides the main energy shell of the electron. This gives the main energy shell of the electron. No doubt. Perfect. The principal quantum number provides an idea about the size of the orbital. Now, how are you going to understand this? If I say that your shell number is 1, you will say shell number 1. If I say your shell number is 2, you say shell number 2 and you can get the idea that shell number 2 is bigger in size than shell number 1. So, more the uh, principal quantum number n, more will be the size. So, this means that what, which quantum number gives you the size of the orbital? Ma'am, the principal quantum number actually provides us the information about the size. If n is, uh, the more the n, the more will be the size of the orbital. Clear? Yes. Next. N is always a positive integer. It can be 1, 2, 3, 4, right? The greater the value of the bigger is the orbital. No issues. Perfect. The N values directly gives you the number of subshells present within the same shell. This is the next important thing which I am going to tell you now. So, my dear students, you know that, you know that N is the principal shell. Yes. And I told you that in a city there can be a lot of sectors, right? The sectors are actually the subshells. Shell shell will have subshells right city city will have sectors so you can understand it by that so this means that n can have l values more than l value more than one l values i told you now these l actually denotes you the subshells so now we have and which what is l what which quantum number was l Mm, Ma'am, quantum number L was azimuthal quantum number, right? Second quantum number, perfect. So, my dear students, which quantum number gives you information about subshells? Tell me, tell me the answer. Ma'am, azimuthal quantum number or the subsidiary quantum number, right? Yes. So, now we are going to talk about the azimuthal quantum number, right? Yes. Now, come back to this point. The n value directly gives you the number of subshells. This means that if your principal quantum number is 1, right, then how many subshells will you have? How many subshells will you have? Ma'am, we will have 1 subshell. Number of subshell is 1. What is the name? That we will understand right now. Next, if you have n is equal to 2, your principal quantum number is 2, then how many subshells will you have? You will have two subshells. What will be their name? That you don't know. That I'll tell you, right? But you know the number of subshells. You know the number of sectors in a city, right? Yes, perfect. Now, azimuthal or subsidiary quantum number denoted by L, the L value represents the subshells present within a given main shell, right? Yes. For example, if you have n is equal to 3, you will have how many values of 3? If you have n is equal to 3. You will have number of subshells, number of sectors, which is 3, right? So, this means that L will have 3 different values. What 3 different values? That I will tell you right now, which you will understand here. I will I'll, I'll make the flow chart and then you will understand 3, right? Now, if you have number of subshells 3, this means that L, now my dear students, you have to understand this first, that uh, for L, the values are from 0 to 
n minus 1. This is something which you need to know, right? So, this formula is for your understanding. Imagine if I say that you have n is equal to 2, you know that you will have two subshells, yes? So, subshell will be 2, one will be l is equal to this and l is equal to this. I don't know what will be the name, right? Yes. Now, if you have n subshells, then L can have values from 0 to n minus 1. This means that here, L can have 0 value and n minus 1. So, 2 minus 1, 1. So, it can have only 2 values. Here are the 2 values. Similarly, if your n is equal to 3, can you write the L values? You can write the L values. You know that if n is equal to 3, you will have 3 subshells. What will be their numbers? Ma'am, L will be 3, 3 values. And what will be the values? 0 to n minus 1. So, 0, then 1, then 3 minus 1. That is 2. So, the last value will be 2. So, yes, ma'am. We now understand this. Oh, so, I hope you understood this. Now, this was the important thing. Now, I am going to tell you something really interesting. Okay. So, if I have n is equal to 3, I will have 3 L values. I can have L is equal to 0. I can have L is equal to 1. I can have L is equal to 2. Right. Yes. These are the 3 values I can have. Now, my dear students, I want to tell you that each will have a particular shape. What will be the shapes that you have to understand? Whenever L is equal to 0, you call a S subshell. This is the name which you need to remember. And my dear students, this will always be spherical. This will always be spherical. If you have L is equal to 1, then you will have the subshell named as P subshell. You will have a subshell named P subshell. Okay. And the shape will be dumbbell shape. Shape will be dumbbell shape. If you want to write, you can write this will be spherical. This will be dumbbell shape. Right? Yes. So, if you have L is equal to 2, then the subshell will be D subshell. Okay? And the shape would be something like this, which is a double dumbbell shape. What is named, what it is named as? Double dumbbell shape. So, you will write double dumbbell shape. Okay? So, this is the thing which you need to remember, my dear students. Okay? I hope you've got this point. Whenever L is equal to 0, it is a S subshell and it will always be spherical in shape. L is equal to 1, P subshell, always dumbbell shape. Uh, L is equal to 2, D, uh, double, D dub, uh, subshell and it will always be a double dumbbell shape. Okay? Yes, I'll tell you further but stay for this. We are Good to go. Now, my dear students, the orbitals are present within the subshell. What were the orbitals? Ma'am, these were the house. Right? I told you house. Now, you know that you have a city, you have a sector, you will have houses in it. Similarly, you have a shell, you have subshell and you will have orbitals in the subshells. Right? Yes. So, this is what they are telling you. Now, next. All the orbitals within a given subshell for a given value have identical shapes. This means that, this means that, for example, if you have L is equal to 0, if you have L is equal to 0, then you have a S subshell. Right? Yes. And the shape of S subshell will always be spherical. The shape of S subshell will always be spherical. If you have L is equal to 1 and you have a P subshell, then the shape of P subshell and the houses or the orbitals inside this subshell will have the same shape. Right? Yes. Which is dumbbell shape. Similarly, you can talk about the D subshell as well. Right? Yes. I hope you've got this point. We are moving point by point. L defines the shape of the orbital. Obviously, L is telling you about the shape, right? If you know L is 0, you know it is spherical. If uh, you know L is 1, you know it is a P subshell, you know it is a dumbbell shape. So, who is giving the information about the shape? Ma'am, azimuthal quantum number is giving me the information about the shape. And this question is asked n number of times in your previous years. So, you need to know this. Perfect? Yes, it is a very important point. Next. The S orbital are spherical in shape, I told you, with the nucleus at the center, right? Yes. Next, my dear students, the surface of the sphere has the maximum electron density, right? Yes. So, the maximum electron density will be on the surface. I hope this is clear. Perfect, my dear students. Now, how are you going to represent a particular subshell? I am going to tell you about this. See, 
लेट अस से यू हैव वन एस इफ आई टेल यू यू हैव अ वन एस सबशेल इफ आई टेल यू यू हैव अ वन एस सबशेल दिस मींस दैट यू हैव वन एस spherical subshell right for this you can tell that n value is equal to 1 because always the representation of a shell representation of a cell is given by representation is always given by n l right yes where n is the shell number and l is the subshell so if you are given one s you know that n value is 1 and you know that l value is 0 So now you have a few of the questions for your homework. So these are your homework. You have to give me the shell number and the subshell number. Right? One is two p. Second is let us say three d. Third is four f. And uh, okay, you can just give me these. F has a complex shape. Okay, F has a complex shape so don't worry if you are asking if you are asked about the uh, shape of f orbital you just write it as a complex shape right but you have to give me the values of n and l okay n and l values for these three clear yes you have to comment in the comment section i hope you will do your homework now let's move forward so the number of orbitals now i know that in a subshell there will be a lot of orbitals but how many orbitals how am i going to know the number of orbitals here is the formula for you the number of orbitals within a given subshell is given by the value, uh, by the formula 2l plus 1 it is always given by 2l plus 1 okay so if you have n is equal to 2 you have l is equal to 0 and 1 so you 2s subshell right now let's talk about this the thing which ma'am told you you will get this right yes let me explain and you will get this point as well now my dear students if ma'am is telling you if ma'am is telling you that you have l is equal to 2 you have l is equal to 2 okay i am asking you that in this subshell how many orbitals are present or if we talk about the layman language in this sector how many houses are present right yes so if l is equal to 2 i know the formula for number of orbitals is 2l plus 1 right yes this means that 2 into 2 plus 1 this is 5 so basically you will have five orbitals in a l subshell right yes this means that you will have five different ml values you will have five different ml values what does ml denote ml used to denote the orbital or the house right yes so you will have five different values you don't know what five different values that i will tell you but till now you know that you will have five orbitals or five different ml values right yes now take one example if you have l is equal to 1 right take example l is equal to 1 So, ma'am, l is equal to one. This means that two l plus one, which is three. So you will have three orbitals. Which subshell is this? This is a p subshell, and p subshell has a shape of dumbbell shape. I hope you get this point. So you will have three different dumbbell shapes. You will have three different dumbbell shapes. All the orbitals will have the same shape. In a p subshell, you will have all the dumbbell shaped orbitals. Okay. Similarly, or uh, if you have l is equal to two, then you will have five orbitals, and all the five orbitals will be double dumbbell shape, right? Yes. So the shape of all the orbitals are same. Now you can get this chart as well. The number of orbitals in a given subshell depends upon the l values only, not the n value. Okay. Now l value zero, one, two, three subshells and how many orbitals given by two l plus one? Now if s orbital, then only one orbital spherical in shape. If three orbitals, p orbital, dumbbell shape. Five double dumbbell shape. F it has a complex shape. Shape it is out of your syllabus. Okay. Yes. So you need to know this. I hope you get this right. Yes. Now let's move forward, my dear students. now a set of s orbitals will appear as concentric circles i didn't get this point i want to know from you okay i want to know this from you you'll answer me if i say i have 1s and i have a 2s orbital okay yes so you will say that ma'am both of them has a s subshell and a s subshell this means both of them have l value equal to 0 
सो दिस मीन्स दैट दे विल हैव अ एस सबशल एंड एस सबशल इज फेरिकल इन शेप राइट यस then how are you going to differentiate the two how are you going to differentiate the two if both are spherical this n value just remind a uh, quick recap n value gives you the size n value gives you the size the more the n value the bigger is the size this means that if 1s is this then 2s will be this and if you have a 3s it will be even bigger sphere so spherical in shape but the more the n value the more will be the size similarly now your homework question is your homework question is draw draw 2p and 3p you have to draw 2p and 3p any 2p and 3p orbitals right yes any 2p and 3p one particular like i have drawn for 1s and 2s you have to draw for 2p and 3p okay so this is your homework okay let's move forward p orbitals are dumbbell shape with the nucleus at the center i told you that yes i have told you that my dear students l is equal to 1 p subshell and it will have 3 p orbitals and all the p orbitals will be dumbbell shaped now now we are going to write the various shapes in particular axes as well now you have three you have three different orbitals of p now how do you name them my dear students i'll just tell you you name them as p i'll take yellow pen green you take them as px py and pz okay these are the three different p orbitals p orbital has three different uh, sorry p subshell has three p orbitals and the shape of them is px py and pz i know it is a dumbbell shape there is no difference what is the difference is that in px the dumbbell lies in the x axis if this is your x axis then this will be your shape y axis your dumbbell lies in the y axis like this okay and for pz orbital your dumbbell lies in the z axis so this is only the difference three different p orbitals px along the x axis py along the y axis and pz along the z axis now who gives the information about this axis here comes the role of your magnetic quantum number which is your ml okay that gives you about information about the orientation the axis is the x axis y axis and z axis okay so we are going to study about that as well now the maximum electron density in the p orbital is found at the surface you can see this that here the maximum electron density is this uh, on the surface here 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 right here and here on the surface i hope it's clear perfect now let's move forward now we are going to study about the different shapes of d subshell okay d orbitals have double dumbbell shape and how many d orbitals are present in a d subshell d subshell i know that ma'am l is equal to how much 2 i know the number of orbitals it is given by 2l plus 1 so ma'am 5 so you will have five different uh, you will have five different orbitals of d and all shape will be double dumbbell but there will be a difference in their excesses okay so now we are going to talk about these what are these five different values you have d x y d y z d z x d x square y square and d z square these are the five different values which you have okay so now we are going to study each and every one's shape okay first i'll have to write here shape okay so for dxy you will have what you will have a x axis you will have a y axis so you will have this x axis you will have this y axis and the shape would be something like this double dumbbell in between the axis if you are a bit clear with dxy can you draw the shape for dyz for dyz the shape would be something like this would be let us say y axis and this would be z axis and this will be in between the axis again right the two axes are written here it will be in between next my dear students d 
x y y z z x okay so you will have x axis and z axis and the shape would be in between the axis okay yes these three orbitals have the electron density in between the axis but if you talk about the other which is d x square y square what will happen for d x square y square you will write x axis you will write y axis and the shape would be something like this double dumbbell but this time along the axis this is the most important part and the fifth shape would be d z square okay yes so this would be z axis and you will have a very interesting shape out here you will have something like this and then a conical shape here this is the shape of a dz square orbital okay yes so you need to know the shapes you need to know where the electron density is maximum where the electron density is minimum here this denotes the nucleus and you don't have electron density here 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 on the nucleus but here my dear students you have a conical shape like this this elect the hair electrons surround this area in a conical shape right so this is what is known as your dz square orbital i hope you got these shapes yes the shape is given by the shape is given by azimuthal quantum number but the information about orientation is given by magnetic quantum number which is your third quantum number clear yes let's move forward now my dear students i got this point now we are going to understand something about the energy of orbitals you have different orbitals and the energies of different orbitals are also different how are you going to know about the energies so my dear students to know the information of the orbitals you need a formula which is your n plus l rule you have n plus l rule okay so whenever you talk about the n plus l rule as long as n plus l value is the same as long as for a particular orbital n plus l value is the same their energy is same if their n plus l value is different then their energy will be different let's talk about this okay for hydrogen atom the energy of orbitals depends on the n values only now orbitals are actually arranged in order of their energy the lowest orbital will uh, the lowest uh, energy orbital will be the at bottom and similarly they'll increase electrons are also filled in orbitals according to their energy the lowest energy orbital is filled first then the higher one then the higher one then the higher one that is the most important reason why we need to understand what is the energy of different orbitals now for electron energy of orbitals only and only depends on n value not on l value because it has only one electron so we say that for a single electron atom for a single electron atom or ion the energy of orbitals only depends on the n value the smaller the n value the smaller is the energy the more the n value the more is the energy so n plus o, n plus l rule does not apply on hydrogen and hydrogen like species but on the others n plus l rule will apply okay so here the orbitals energy would be uh, you can say that uh, for n is equal to 1 minimum energy then 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 this is how you see the energies okay now for hydrogen atom the greater the n value the more is the energy i hope it's clear now you'll have to do this question if you got the point it says that compare the energy of hydrogen atom you have to compare the energies of hydrogen atom okay i know that for hydrogen atom n plus l rule does not apply only n value rule apply so i can say that ma'am one is energy one is energy has n is equal to 1 and 2s has n is equal to 2 l is equal to 0 n is equal to 2 and l is equal to 1 but for hydrogen atom only n values are to be considered so n is equal to 1 will have lesser energy than n is equal to 2 and since they both have n value same so their energy will be same right yes so this is the correct order if it is a hydrogen or hydrogen like species but if you have multi electronic species then what is the case it will have a different case for multi electronic species you have n plus l rule right now what is the n plus l rule the more the n plus l value energy will be more 
Now you will have a question in your mind, ma'am. What if two different orbitals have the same n plus l value? Example, example. Let us say I gave you three p and four s orbitals. You have three p and four s orbital. Okay. So if you see here, your n value is three and your l value is one, right? If you see here, your n value is four, your l value is zero. right so here also n plus l value is 4 here also n plus l value is 4 so is both of them energy equal no now in such cases when orbitals have the same n plus value if n plus l value same then more the n value more will be the energy so first you will consider this and this will be the second condition only if n plus l value is same only if n plus l value is same okay now for multi electronic systems greater the n plus l value the more is the energy of the orbitals if n plus l values are found to be same the orbital with greater n value will have greater energy for example this case so you can say that this will have a higher energy if you got this then you have to do this question yourself pause the video try the question okay so now i am solving this question compare the energy levels of the orbitals right so i know that i know that here n plus l value will write all the n plus l values my dear students so let's write all the n plus l values here uh, n is equal to 2 l is equal to 0 so 2 here i'll write it here okay n plus l values here it is 2 here it is 3 here it is 3 here it is 4 5 5 here 4 and here 5 i've done this quickly you also have to do this okay you find n and l values you add you will get this okay now my dear students you have to write it in increasing order the lowest energy and the maximum energy so first and the most important thing is lowest energy is 2 so 2s will have minimum energy then three values two of different orbitals have three value the lower the n value lower will be the energy so n value is lower here so 2p and then 3s then you have four value here so 4s then my dear students 3d also has five and this also has five lower the n value lower will be the energy so 3d and then 5s so this is the correct order for increasing energies okay this is how you are going to solve the questions now let's move forward next my dear students next is your degenerate orbitals degenerate orbitals what are degenerate orbitals the orbitals with which have equal energy this means that they will have same n plus l value they will have same uh, same n value as well such orbitals which have both the cases equal n plus l value also n value they will be called as degenerate orbitals the orbitals which have the same energy okay degenerate orbitals are the orbitals having exactly the same energy levels are called degenerate orbitals okay degenerate orbitals differ in the orientation so they only and only differ in the orientation now i am going to give you an example so my dear students if i talk about if i talk about 2p i'll write i'll use yellow pen if i talk about 2p subshell you will say in 2p subshell l is equal to 1 so ma'am l is equal to 1 has 2l plus 1 values orbitals which means you will have three orbitals what are the three orbitals my dear students px py and pz and you know that all of them has a dumbbell shape this will also have a dumbbell shape dumbbell shape and dumbbell shape how do they differ ma'am they differ only by the orientation one will be on x axis one on y and one on z so my dear students these three orbitals if i talk about their n plus l value all of them has 2p right so n is 2 p is 1 so 3 all of them has the same n plus l value if i talk about the n value all of them has n value 2 this means that both the conditions are equal this means that these three orbitals are degenerate these three orbitals are degenerate similarly my dear students in every subshell 2p subshell 3p subshell 4p subshell in a particular subshell in a particular subshell in a particular n value their subshell will have same orbitals a degenerate orbitals i will give you one more example if i talk about 2p and 3p you know that you will have here also three orbitals here also three orbitals so 
their energy will be more but these three will be degenerate and these three will be degenerate right because here n value is 3 here n value is 2 that is the reason that these are different but these three are equal and these three are also equal i hope you got the point and they only differ by the orientation by their position in the space right yes this is what is known as orientation so next quantum number is your magnetic quantum number which is denoted by catch <laughs> which is denoted by ml okay yes so magnetic quantum number this actually gives you the information about the orientation so magnetic quantum number specifies the orbitals in a given subshell the px py and pz the x axis y axis and z axis the shapes which i told you along the axis those axis information was given by magnetic quantum number right magnetic quantum number provides the orientation of the orbitals this is again and again asked in your previous year questions a lot of times right so you have to know this n l m values are fixed orbital is fixed 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 if i give you n is equal to 2 l is equal to 1 and let us say ml what will be the ml values we are going to understand this so my dear students if you have l value equal to let's say you have some l value so what will be the values for ml ml will have values from plus l to minus l okay example we cannot understand without example so let's say l is equal to 2 so what will be the magnetic ml values plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 and minus 2 all these values are possible and you actually know that for l there are only 5 orbitals by the formula 2l plus 1 5 and what are the 5 values these are the 5 values you just got the values right isn't it isn't it amazing yes so let's move forward my dear students if you have n is equal to l n l m fixed 2 1 and let us say this is 0 this means that you are talking about a particular one orbital you went from n you had how many values uh, 0 you can have only z uh, 0 to n minus 1 now so you can have 0 and 1 value right yes and for this I'll, I'll draw it much better you have n you can have only two l values l is equal to 0 and l is equal to 1 right for each l value you can have how many values for ml 2l plus 1 right here only one value which will be 0 here three values ml is equal to minus 1 ml is equal to 0 and ml is equal to plus 1 these three values are possible yes now if i have fixed all the three values n is equal to 2 I went to 1 and from here to 0. So basically, I'm talking about this particular orbital. I have reached here. See, three information given, I have reached here. And I know that two electrons are present here. Any one electron you have to choose, whoever is your friend. So the orbitals can be vacant. It, now the orbital, the house can be vacant. Maybe no two electrons are present. Maybe one electron present or maybe both of the electrons are present. So the orbitals can be vacant. It can have one electron or it can have a maximum of two electrons. Maximum of two. A fourth quantum number is required to specify out of the, those two. That is known as your magnetic quant, uh, spin quantum number. Right. That quantum number is known as the spin quantum number. Okay. A fourth quantum number is represented to specify the electron in the same orbital and that is your spin quantum number which is denoted by ms and ms can have only two values plus half and minus half okay so if you give the four quantum number values you will reach one particular electron now if you got this for one what you have to do is you have to make a flow chart for me okay let us say your n is equal to two you'll have to make a flow chart for me for all the quantum numbers okay n is equal to 2 you can have how many l values i can have l values from 0 to n minus 1 that is only 2 l values i can have 2 l values l can be 0 and l can be 1 right now from here i know that i can have ml values how much 2l plus 1 this means 2 into 0 plus 1 i can have only one value so here my ml value will be zero here my dear students you can have three ml values minus one ml is equal to 
zero ml is equal to plus one right yes from here you can have only two spin quantum numbers half and minus half ms ms you can have here ms plus half ms minus half similarly here ms plus half and ms minus half here also ms plus half and ms minus half this is how you are going to solve the question right yes so this is only the basic idea you can reach any electron anyhow you need only these quantum numbers now let's solve questions and you will get everything i am assuring you let's move forward my dear students question is on your screen you have to pause your video and you have to solve the question and give me the answer in the comment section okay and you have to tell me how many questions were correct if all the questions were correct then buy a chocolate for yourself from my side okay and do let me know in the comment section now which two orbitals are located along the axis and not between the axis you have to tell which of the following are located are located along the axis and not between the axis okay so you need to know the shapes here okay first is dxy dx square ma'am there is no orbital named as dx square right so this option is wrong next dxy and pz so if i talk about dxy you will have x axis you will have the uh, y axis and ma'am the orbitals will be in between the axis we want along the axis right so this cannot be the right option no c dyz and px again dyz will have in between the axis shape again we don't have along the axis so this will not be the correct answer here you have pz this means that you have a z axis and you have a dumbbell shape dx square y square you have a double dumbbell shape you have x axis y axis and you have orbitals along the axis right so ma'am here both the orbitals are along the axis so the correct option is option d very good my dear students amazing let's move forward to the next question the probability of finding electrons in dxy orbital is so if you talk about dxy then you will have to write x axis you will have to write y axis you will have to draw double dumbbell shape and i see that it is in between the axis at what particular angle if i see approximately 45 degree because it is in between i have drawn it a little weird way but it is along 45 degree angle nearly yes so at an angle of 45 degree with x axis would be the correct answer right yes not along x and y axis it is not along x and y it is in between x and y not along x axis not along x and y axis okay it is in between the x and y axis okay at 45 degree angle perfect so option d would be your correct answer let's move forward to the next question pause the video and try the question yourself what does this question say which quantum number defines the orientation of orbital in the space around the nucleus c n orbital gives the size l orbital sorry l quantum number gives the shape ml that is your magnetic quantum number tells the orientation that is along which axis the electrons are present right so who is giving the information about orientation magnetic quantum number ml that is option c will be your correct answer right yes let's move forward to the next question the probability of finding py orbit electron is zero in okay so if i talk about py orbital i know that i'll have a y axis and the probability would be something like this right yes so if this is the y axis then this would be x axis and this would be your z axis right yes so my dear students if you talk about if you talk about the x z plane see this is your x axis this is your y axis and this is your z axis so if you talk about this plane this plane z axis x y x z plane x z plane will you ever have any probability of finding electron no why because in this particular plane no electron cannot be present right yes so if you imagine it 
if you imagine it 3d in 3d then you will see that xz plane will never have any electron probability right yes so i'll say that xz plane that is option c will be my correct answer because if this is x axis this is y axis i'll have electron here right in the y axis i'll have some electron probability in the xy plane in the yz plane but i cannot have any electron probability in xz plane okay yes so option c will be your correct answer let's move forward to the next question the quantum number which determines the shape of the orbital very direct question azimuthal quantum number gives the shape spherical l is equal to 0 s subshell l is equal to 1 p subshell dumbbell shape so who is giving this information l l is azimuthal quantum number so option b will be your correct answer right yes let's move forward to the next question next is the number of orbitals of g type r so now you have to understand this you have s you have p you have d s p d you know s p d s p d f g h i and so on this is how you're going to understand s p d f g h i j k l m n o p right yes so if this is l is equal to 0 this is l1 2 this is 3 and this will be 4 so on you can understand so if you have l is equal to 4 then how many orbitals can be present number of orbitals number of orbitals in a subshell is given by the formula 2l plus 1 l value for g is 4 so 2 into 4 plus 1 which is equal to 9 so your correct answer would be 9 9 that is option c is your correct answer so this is how you are going to solve these questions okay perfect let's move forward next question number of orbitals present you have to give the number of orbitals that is how many houses are present number of orbitals present for n is equal to 3 l is equal to 2 and m is equal to plus 2 so this means that if you have n is equal to 3 you can have l 0 1 and 2 right yes and here you can have uh, ml 0 you can have plus 1 0 and minus 1 you can have so many values here plus 2 0 uh, sorry plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 and minus 2 right yes now what uh, information have they given you they have given from here you will move to 2 wala part here and then also you are given ml is equal to plus 2. So, this means that you are given this information. So, basically how many orbitals? ml gives you the information about orbitals and you have reached one particular orbital. So, one orbital that is option A is your correct answer. Right? Yes. Let's move forward to the next question. Next is for which of the following sets of quantum numbers an electron will have the highest energy. For highest energy you know that you need what? n plus l value maximum n plus l value will give you maximum energy right yes so maximum n plus l value right i'll write it here n plus l here value is 5 here 7 here 5 and here again 5 maximum n plus l value b option so my option b is a correct answer right perfect let's move forward to the next question the next question is on your screen you have to solve this question yourself uh let's do one thing i have done a similar question so this question you are supposed to do i am giving you this your homework and i need each and every one to answer in the comment section your correct answer you have to use the n plus l value the more the n plus l value more is the energy the more the n value the more will be the energy in case n plus l is same i've given you the hint you have to do this question and give me the answer i am not doing this question L perfect so this is your homework question in the comment section let's see who all answers me next question which of the following set of quantum numbers is impossible for an electron now do this question perfect if n is equal to 1 l can have 0 value 0 to n minus 1 yes it can have ml can have value from plus l to minus l this is possible this is possible this is possible next if n is equal to 0 l can have values from 0 to n minus 1 so this is possible uh, plus 7 to minus 7 so minus 6 comes in between this is possible so yeah this is possible next n is equal to 2 l is equal to 1 perfect 0 to n minus 1 values possible ml is equal to 0 yes ma'am this is also possible from plus 1 to minus 1 values 0 comes in between so this is also possible 
फोर्थ ऑप्शन एन इज इक्वल टू थ्री एल इज इक्वल टू टू फ्रॉम जीरो टू टू वैल्यूज आर पॉसिबल सो एल इज इक्वल टू टू इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर एम एल इट इज माइनस थ्री बट हियर एम एल वैल्यूज कैन बी फ्रॉम प्लस टू प्लस वन जीरो माइनस वन एंड माइनस टू कैन माइनस थ्री बी पॉसिबल नो मैम सो ऑप्शन डी इज योर करेक्ट आंसर दिस वैल्यू इज नॉट पॉसिबल इजी वेरी इजी माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स अमेजिंग लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन योर स्क्रीन वॉट डज इट से असप्शल एन इज इक्वल टू फाइव एल इज इक्वल टू थ्री कैन अकोमोडेट हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स फर्स्ट यू नीड टू नो हाउ मेनी ऑर्बिटल्स एंड देन यू कैन फाइंड आउट नंबर ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स राइट येस सो इफ यूर एल इज इक्वल टू थ्री हाउ मेनी नंबर ऑफ ऑर्बिटल्स मैम नंबर ऑफ ऑर्बिटल्स कैन बी दैट इज योर हाउस ट्वेल्व प्लस वन विच इज थ्री इंटू टू सिक्स प्लस वन सेवन ईच ऑर्बिटल कैन हैव हाउ मेनी इलेक्ट्रॉन्स two maximum two electrons you have seven orbitals and in each electron two maximum can reside so how many electrons maximum electrons 7 into 2 14 this is the maximum value which is possible maximum people who can live in seven houses right yes so 14 that is option b is your correct answer right yes this is how you are going to solve the questions perfect next question which of the following does not exist according to the quantum theory okay so here if n is equal to 5 for g s p d f g h l is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so can g possible 0 to uh, uh, n minus 1 4 yes ma'am this is possible if n is equal to 4 then l For f, l value is three, right? Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Zero to n minus one values are possible. Here, if n is five, l value h. For h, it is five. Is this possible? No. For l value zero to four are possible. N minus one, right? Yes. So this is not possible. So option C is your correct answer, which is not possible. This is possible, right? Yes, because n is six, l can be five. Possible, right? perfect let's move forward with this we have came to the end of our session so my dear students i hope you got the point you got this topic because i have made i have tried to make this the most easiest for you my dear students and uh, do let me know how many questions were you able to answer correctly by yourself and give me the answer of the homework question as well and do let me know how was this session uh, i would love to know your feedback right yes and uh, till then keep studying and let me and keep studying right yes and all the very best my dear students thank you